Well, God bless you, God bless you, and God bless you one more time. Rev Eddie here. <laughs> what? Where y'all at? Oh, I know it's cold out there. Y'all, y'all under the blanket still calling it St. Mattress, huh? Rev Eddie here. There's our warriors for Jesus. Any more warriors out there? Come on, come on, come on. We got to stop playing and start slaying. Amen. Oh, we are just so excited today. And action. I said an action. Oh, you act like I didn't say action. I said an action packed. <laughs> Day is in store for us. We're going to do this podcast, spend some time with you, and then we going to prison, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to prison. <laughs> Why are y'all looking at me like that? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> yeah. We're excited about going to prison. Oh, people don't want to go to prison. Well, I guess they don't. And I thank God he didn't he he didn't allow me to go back in the day. Amen. Oh, well, I went to jail a lot. Never never served a day in prison, but we're going to prison now, aren't we? I guess the Lord was looking to me back then like, child, if you don't stop, you're not going to enter into this prison the way I want you to. The way I want you to, you can get out the same day. <laughs> if you go in, they're going to keep you. Chill out. Amen. But we just thank God for each and every one of you. We thank God for another day, another opportunity to come forth and do his work, his will, his way. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. A shout out to all of you on YouTube and Facebook. We thank God for each and every one of you. And we thank God for all he's done, all he's doing and everything he planned on doing in each and every one of your lives. Amen. Know this in your heart. You. Yeah. You. And you and you. Yep. You. I'm looking right at you. You're the best part of this ministry. Amen. And we love each and every one of you. So if you're on YouTube and you'd like to reach out to me for personal prayer, Perhaps you want to chat something out and get something off your chest. It's okay. I'm here. Amen. Come over to Facebook. Search Rev Eddie Wiggins. Amen. On Facebook, Rev Eddie is one word. No dash, no, no space, no dash, no dots, no period. One word. Rev Eddie Wiggins. Message me. We'll exchange numbers. That way we can talk it out, chat it out, cry it out, shout it out, pray it out, knowing all the while in our hearts that our almighty God, our all-powerful God, our all-seeing, all-knowing, miracle-working God is going to work it out. Amen. Hallelujah. Shout out to our favorite island in the whole wide world, the island of Mindanao over there in the Philippines, and all the beautiful people there. Amen. From Dipalog City to Palanco to Dipaton City to Barangay Districts 1, 2, and 3, and all the way up into those mountains. We just thank God for each and every one of you. And we thank God that you're following this podcast which has been turned into a broadcast by our two favorite DJs in the whole wide world, Joe Ryan and Woody Boy at the Mighty Kiss FM Polanco, 90.1 on your FM radio dial. We thank God for the both of you, and we thank our Lord for shielding and protecting the Mighty Kiss FM. Amen. And each and every person who serves and works there, Thank you, Jesus. And we also want to keep lifted up in our prayers. Pastor Nelia, all the way from Dipalog City up into those mountains, she is just searching for the lost. And her co-pastor, Pastor Mary Jane Pilare. Amen. Childhood friend and now a friend indeed. A sister in Christ, right by Pastor Nelia's side. 
doing a thing for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's continue to pray for Charlotte and Dale over there in beautiful downtown Australia, just on fire for the Lord. Let's keep lifting their ministry up in our prayers, along with Samanga and her ministry in Zambia, Africa. Minister Deborah Atwell down there on that beautiful hot smoke in the island of Trinidad, Tobago, just on fire for the Lord, looking for the lost wherever she can find them on that island and sharing this true gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's continue to pray for Nick and Patricia and that powerful uh, prison ministry the Lord has them doing in beautiful downtown Texas and their friends, Pastor Mike and Pastor Joel at that beautiful Victory Outreach Ministry in Fort Worth, Texas. Amen. And let's continue to pray for Pastor Joel and his wife's six-day-a-week prison ministry. Glory be to God. Let's continue to thank God and pray for my teachers, my coaches, my spiritual mentors. Oh, Coach sent me some good stuff in the last couple of days. If you're interested, I've got a letter. Oh, you act like Coach Gecka didn't send me a letter. He sent me a letter written by Martin Luther King. It's a long letter, y'all. He must have been in there a long time. Remind me of Paul. Amen. He was in the Birmingham, Birmingham, Alabama jail when he wrote this letter. Amen. And it was in 1963. I didn't even know about this letter. They never taught us this letter in school. But this letter motivated in 1963 Coach Gecker. And he had a whole new view on life from this letter. He was going to Concordia Bible School, training up to be our teacher. Come on, Sam Knight, you know what I'm talking about. And this was one of the inspiration in his life. Amen. And I know why. Because he saw the word, <laughs> the word of God in this letter. If you guys are interested, type it in the comments and I'll go ahead and see if I can post that link on my Facebook page that you'd be blessed to. It's like a five page, six page letter. I, I ain't even know he wrote in jail. They didn't give us pens or paper when <laughs> we were going to jail. Amen. But we just want to keep Coach Randy low. And his lovely wife, all his family, relatives, and loved ones, and his ministry lifted up in our prayers along with Coach Gecker, Coach G, as me and Sammy can call him. Hey, Coach. (laughs) Amen. Got his picture above the studio here in case you think he's in the studio. He is. (laughs) Amen. But... Let's keep Coach Gecker and his lovely wife, Dr. K, all his family, relatives, and loved ones, and his ministry lifted up in our prayers. Amen. Keep Anthony and Jamal on the beautiful downtown streets of Atlanta, Georgia, and their ministries lifted up in our prayers, along with my brother in Christ, Rod, amen, and Sarah. 15 years of service as a paramedic, and Captain Haynes, he retired from San Diego Police Department, uh, Fire Department, amen. Sarah and Captain Haynes used to work together, amen, and they both got ministries, amen. We thank God for them, and we want to continue to pray that Sarah will be healed in her body from head to toe like only God can do in Jesus precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for Dorothy and her dad and son Lee. Amen. Pastor Jordy and her powerful ministry, Gail and Tex. Yay! Kids are excited. Gail and Tex are coming over today. Scoop me up and we're going to prison, y'all. And Gail and Tex are going to start us off in the chapel. Amen. It's going to be very exciting to see them share the gifts and blessings that God has placed on their hearts. Amen. But let's continue to pray for uh, Mateo, their grandson, totally healed, delivered, and restored in Jesus' precious and mighty name. 
a shout out and let's keep Jay Clark lifted up in our prayers. Oh, you was real late that time, kids. We thank God for you, Jay. How you doing? And let's continue to pray for Cheyenne and her kids and family, relatives, and loved ones, as well as Helena Gore. We thank God for you, Helena. And Ladera Turner. Yay! And her famous peach cobbler down there in L.A. Let's keep Ladera and her t- entire family lifted up in our prayers. And we just want to say, Ladera, Thank God for you. What a valuable, valuable part of this ministry you are. We are here for you, girl, and we are shoulder to shoulder with you, fighting with you. Amen. For healing and deliverance and salvation throughout your entire family. Whatever you're fighting for, we're locked arms fighting with you, and we thank God for you. And we thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for all he's done. For you and each and every one of your family members, all he's doing and every great and magnificent plan he has for each and every one of you, especially your miracle granddaughter. Amen. Let's continue to pray for evangelist Tammy and her powerful ministry and her daughter. Let's keep Ashley and her daughter. I'm telling you, we ought to pray for these kids. Amen. Getting back to Ladera. Amen. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for building a hedge of protection and a wall of fire around the turners that the enemy cannot, shall not, and will not penetrate. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We want that same wall of fire, Lord. We thank you that you've done that for Ashley and her daughter and family. That wall of fire and hedge of protection so high the enemy cannot, shall not, and will not penetrate. And... Lord, we're asking that you would touch each and every one of the hearts of Ashley's family, all her family members, that they too would fall madly in love with you and serve you your way for the rest of their lives. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, a shout out to Lucia and Sasha. We thank God for both of you. And we're going to continue to pray for Lucia's sister Martina and her brother John. Let's pray for April and her children, whom are Bradley and Emma and Kyle and Gracie, her husband John, her nana Sandy, healed from the top of her head to the soles of her feet in Jesus, precious and mighty name, and salvation, healing, and deliverance for her aunt Sandy. And April's prayer is that all her children and all her family would fall madly in love with Jesus. Huh, we touch and agree right now. It is done in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep our Jesse lifted up in our prayers. His entire family, especially his uncle and mom, that they too would come into the knowledge of this true gospel of Jesus Christ and fall in love with him and serve him the rest of their days. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, let's keep Lene, our truth warrior, lifted up in our prayers and her ministry, her children, her mom, Linda, all her family, relatives, and loved ones, her finances, and her business. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, let's keep Adrena Turner lifted up in our prayers. What are y'all screaming about? I don't even know if she liked kids. Yeah, she likes kids. (laughs) Y'all run to your room every time she come over to eat. So I don't know what all this screaming is about. Amen. We thank God for your dream. And I get to see her this afternoon. A hug. I'm 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 a hug. The quiet storm. Can you imagine that? Rev Eddie in the quiet storm. Hugged up. (laughs) <laughs> Amen. We thank God for you, Drina, and all that the Lord is doing for, around, and through you, your powerful ministry, and your family. And we thank the Lord Jesus for this hedge of protection and wall of fire around you, this peace and comfort in your heart that passes all understanding, that you can continue to be that blessing that God created you to be to all those fine, wonderful gentlemen behind those bars. Amen. And, oh, heal in your body from head to toe. In Jesus' precious and mighty name. Amen. 
So she got on me. <laughs> I guess the other day you women were clowning. I can't remember where we were, uh, whether we were in scripture, uh, Facebook posts, what you all women were doing. But I made an obvious comment. And you know, Drina can't go nowhere on planet Earth without somebody falling in love. She'd be having, she'd be leaving them crushes planet wide. Everybody know that. Y'all be doing the same thing. Don't act like we don't know the male species on this planet. We see how y'all work. And <laughs> she was clowning me because she said women know how to work a room. Well, duh. Even the kids know that. Mama, we gonna be late. No, we ain't, honey. <laughs> but it starts in Tim. Shh, go get in the car. Mama's getting ready. And boy, when the mama walk in there, everybody's sitting down and she makes that entrance. You all know how you work it. <laughs> Everybody knows how women work it. That's why God made you all so special. Amen. So we're not fussing. We just discussing. Amen. Let's keep my boy Brian lifted up in our prayers. DM Faith from YouTube. Salvation for their entire family in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Keep my boy John Fowler lifted up in your prayers along with ES from YouTube. Amen. And Scott Woodall and his warring faithful steeds, Rosie and Tammy with the possibility of a new one, a trio. <laughs> well, he got 12 of them. It'll be a 13th. Amen. Big Brit. I don't know what state he's being imported in from, but he'll probably come by train. Amen. He that big, big bad horse, and the kids can't wait to play with this one. Amen. But we thank God for you, Scott. We thank God that you're back to work. Okay. Hey. COVID can't take us out. We're children of God. <laughs> Amen. It'd be a fight. It'd be uncomfortable. But we always win. I've had it three times, y'all. Amen. So I'm with you, Scott. Amen. But I thank God you're still here. He, he wouldn't allow it to take you out. You're back at work. You're feeling strong. We thank God uh, for your deliverance that the Lord has healed you from anxiety in Jesus' precious and mighty name. We're going to keep praying for your sister and your wife, knowing in our heart that the Lord is making warriors out of them from the inside out. Amen. And we thank God for Ray. We're praying for his healing and deliverance, salvation, as well as Barney. We just thank God for you, Scott. And let's continue to pray for God's Thunder Twins. We love you, God's Thunder Twins. Now, they're little snow bunnies right now. Amen. They didn't crawl up in the, in the house to lit a fire. God, under they blankets, they like these kids over here. They ain't coming out. <laughs> Amen. It is cold back there. But we thank God for you, God's Thunder Twins. We thank God our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, so much for healing both of you from the top of your heads to the soles of your feet of everything. In Jesus' name, we thank the Lord for delivering both of you. Complete the deliverance in every area of your lives in Jesus' precious in mighty name, we thank God for your hearts to minister and serve others. He, Kathy, your friend, healed in her hip. In Jesus' precious and mighty name. And your precious nephew, Jamie, seven years old, totally healed, delivered, and restored. In Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep Pastor Tim lifted up in our prayers. He's loading up now. He's heading out west on his way to Salt Lake City, Utah. So he going to be in some real, well, he's in some real cold. And it ain't going to get no better coming this way. Amen. But uh, 
He'll be with us in a minute. They're loading his trailer now. He just got to get his paperwork and take off, and he'll be calling in a, in a second. Let's keep Pastor Tim, his lovely wife, Heather, his beautiful daughters, Jaden and Haley, lifted up in our prayers. Got to pay for these kids, y'all. Keep Christina with a K, with Christ in her heart and Christ in her name down in beautiful downtown Arkansas. She's covered in snow, too, y'all. Amen. Let's continue to pray for her son, her grandmother, all her family, relatives, and loved ones, her uh, finances, as well as every good thing that God has put on her heart to do. Let's give a shout out and uh, keep praying for all those, our audience in Australia, starting with Paris and Julie and Margaret, Tyler. And Wangui Inn from Melbourne, Australia. Angelica Lewis, Zarlia, Martin in Paris, and Julie and John and Joshua and Jordan and Mariano. Let's not forget to pray for Laura from YouTube and her daughter, Micah. Micah, you are coming out better than you went in in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for Jean from YouTube, Christine Starr, Robert Minnick, Ikina from Houston, Texas, and Ken and Cindy. We just thank God for all you're doing in and around and through this ministry. I thank God. We all thank God for everything he, our, our Heavenly Father is doing in your life, Ken, your wife, Cindy's life, all your family members' lives, your home, your finances. We just thank the Lord for both of you. Amen. Let's continue to pray for Carly as well as healing and protection for Kelly and her five-year-old son. And we thank you, Jesus, for building that hedge of protection and wall of fire around Kelly and her five-year-old son that the enemy cannot, shall not, and will not penetrate. No more abuse in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Healing in your heart, minds, emotions. For many uh, abuse you've already suffered in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And now our beloved Anna from Alabama. Yay! <laughs> Kids want to come there. They think it's too cold, Anna. I told them, uh-uh, you don't want to go there. <coughs> they had 32 today, y'all. That ain't no fun. I think we're at 46 when we talked this morning, but we thank God for Anna, and we want to continue to pray for Anna, especially her husband, Terry, a full and complete healing and recovery and deliverance in his life and body, coming out of that rehab on fire for the Lord in great, awesome, and excellent health. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for this hedge of protection and wall of fire you have around Anna her husband, Terry, her beautiful daughter, Valerie, and those two precious children of Valerie's, Atlas and Odie. Amen. And guess what, kid? Somebody got a birthday today. Yes, it's Valerie's birthday. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. And now these kids are all excited. They think they're getting some cake and ice cream. Anna, no more abuse over your entire family in Jesus' precious and mighty name and salvation, deliverance, and healing from your son, for your son-in-law like the world has never seen in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for peace and healing in Christ-like minds for Raven, Shiloh, and Harley. Let's continue to pray for Gloria and her children, her husband, a new heart uh, and, and kidneys. Just touch them, Lord. Make them just like new in Jesus' name. Her brother, Vincent, out of that VA hospital, no longer on that Adderall, back in his right mind, a Christ-like mind, a sound mind, filled with love and power in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for Lakeisha and her ministry, son and family, along with my spiritually adopted family, Michelle, my girl Angelina, Gilbert, and Mia, and all their family, relatives, and loved ones, and peace and love throughout their entire family. 
in Jesus precious and mighty name let's keep minister prophetess Laura Solis lifted up in our prayers along with her ministry she's praying for she wants us to pray for peace and forgiveness throughout her family and ministry let's continue to pray for Laura's son George and her daughter Adrena and her cousin Violet in Jesus precious and mighty name Let's continue to pray for John Garcia from YouTube, totally delivered from drugs in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep Alonzo Holloway lifted up in our prayers, along with Carrie and Ron and Ruby and Lucy. Amen. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this hedge of protection and wall of fire you have around this entire warring for your kingdom family and that your mighty hand is upon each and every one of them. A wall so high the enemy cannot, shall not, and will not penetrate. Totally heal, carry this day in her body. In Jesus' precious and mighty name. And Lucy's in her third day with that tummy medicine. No relief yet, but we're praying that God's hand is upon Lucy. We already know his hand is upon her, but that he would remove any more of that discomfort in her tummy. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, let's keep Derek and his entire family lifted up in our prayers. <coughs> what? What y'all shouting about? Y'all know Derek? Y'all don't know Derek. You just trying to get to know Derek. Oh, you got a package? What, what y'all got? Oh, they got crackers and cheese and snossages and they got some fruit. Oh, okay. Derek sent you all something. Thank you, Derek. And God bless you. The kids love you. We love you. And we thank God for you and your entire family, especially your mom. We're praying that the Lord would reveal himself to each and every one of your family members and mom in a very real and powerful way. Share with them his love, gospel, and truth. Fill them, each and every one of them, with his Holy Spirit, that they too may fall madly in love with him and serve him the rest of their days. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, let's continue to pray for Marie Eleanor and her husband and son, Boyd Lamar from YouTube, his own place, a nice place, a safe place, a great job in healing in his heart, in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for Chris and her husband and all her family and relatives and loved ones over there in Kenya, Africa, especially her brother Benedict. We're praying for Benedict for his salvation, healing, and deliverance from drugs and alcohol and lifestyles not becoming to God, that he too will become a mighty warrior for Jesus, fall in love with Jesus and serve him the rest of his days in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for Al Battle, Angelo Highsmith, James Mayer, and Cody all delivered from drugs. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, Mario, for his salvation, we're praying against the spirit of anger and rage throughout this ministry in each and every one of our homes and families in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Hey, Auntie Helen! <laughs> Kids want to come down there. They cold. <laughs> Amen. They want to see when, you, when Auntie Helen cooked, that kitchen get hot. Okay, they want to come down there with you, Auntie, and we thank God for you. Let's keep Michelle Van all lifted up in our prayers and her ministries, along with Pastor Larry and his ministry over there in Dipalog City. His beautiful family, his lovely wife, his daughters, Jaira and Micah, Angelica, Jelica, you are healed in your heart in Jesus. Precious and mighty name, thank you, Lord. And Micah, you return into school real quick. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, and just, Lord, pour them out a financial blessing that will knock their socks off and meet every need. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, we declare that the Spirit of God that you have freely given the Christian staff, inmates, and volunteers of Solano Prison and every prison, causes them not to walk 
in a spirit of fear or timidity, but instead they walk in power, love, and a sound mind. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that because of your presence in them, every place that the soles of their feet shall step becomes holy ground and belongs to them in Jesus' name. Your presence, Heavenly Father, has caused them to become a great and generous blessing to everyone that enters these prison walls. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for demonstrating your amazing love towards them every day. We choose to walk in the example of love that Hosea showed towards Gomer, even in her unfaithfulness to him. We choose to move in an abundance of love, showing respect for all, even when we are faced with pain and unfaithfulness. We follow your example, Heavenly Father, and walk in your way of love. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for continually breaking off every chain off of every heart and setting each and every one of these captives free. Receive the prayers of incense rising up day and night from the men, staff, and volunteers on these prison grounds. Receive them on behalf of every family, person, and place represented. We declare and thank you, Lord Jesus, that your joy, health, freedom, rest, protection, and the peace of God rule in the hearts of every person. God, you are always good. And the church said together, amen, amen, and amen. Who's ready for a word? Come on! Grab your Bible. We're going into the book of Acts, chapter 25. Amen. Now, it's about to get real up in here. Now, you remember from yesterday's podcast, we were in chapter 24, where Paul appeared before Felix. Amen? Felix wanted a bribe. He done left Paul in prison for two, de- two years. Now, imagine this, this apostle on fire for the Lord. He's been out there on this battlefield building churches, anointing elders and pastors for these churches, going back to these churches, encouraging the saints. He on fire. And now he got to sit down somewhere he don't want to be. This Christian walk will take you where you don't want to be sometimes. But we go through, y'all. We got the vision. We got the fire. We're filled with the Holy Ghost and stuff. <laughs> it's okay. Because in God's per- perfect time, he's going to let us out. So, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to back up into yesterday's lesson. Amen? Uh, just to verse 24 and bring us into today's lesson in chapter 25, starting at verse 1, and I'll be reading out of the New Living Translation for your ease. Amen? So, uh, verse 24 from yesterday's, uh, in chapter 24, so it's 24 and 24, states, a few days later, Felix came back with his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish, sending for Paul. They listened as he told them about faith in Christ Jesus, as he reasoned with them about righteousness and self-control. And the coming day of judgment, Felix became frightened. Go away for now, he replied. When it is more convenient, I'll call for you again. Verse 26. He also hoped that Paul would bribe him, so he sent for him quite often and talked with him. After two years went by in this way, Felix was succeeded by Portius Festus. And because Felix wanted to gain favor with the Jewish people, he left Paul in prison. All right, let's see where we're at. Get your popcorn. Here it comes. Three days This is uh, chapter 25, verse 1. Three days after Festus arrived in Caesarea to take over his new responsibilities, he left for Jerusalem. 
where the leading priest and other Jewish leaders met with him and made their accusations against Paul. Are you catching this? Catch this scene. See this. Open up in your spirit. Amen? Three days after he takes his new post, he heads to Jerusalem to see what all the hubbub's about. With this prisoner, Paul, who to everyone's knowledge doesn't belong here. What's really going on here? Amen? That's what Festus wants to know. So he goes to these accusers, these religious leaders, introduces himself, lets them know I'm the new sheriff in town. <laughs> Amen? I'm the new governor. What's really going on out here? Amen? And so, verse 3 says, they ask Festus as a favor to transfer Paul to Jerusalem. See, Paul is safe in prison in Caesarea. Are you with me? Watch this now. Let's read that again. They asked Festus as a favor to transfer Paul to Jerusalem, planning to ambush and kill him on the way. Wow. So, the Pharisees, Sadducees, teachers of religious law, the Sanhedrin, do you see their evil? That's how they were able to lead an entire nation, the nation of Israel, away from God. And they know that Israel is God's chosen nation. They know that the Hebrews, these Jews, are God's chosen people. But they have never embrace God. They have never served God. There were individuals that would profit. Joshua, a general. Oh yeah, there were many individuals that loved the Lord, knew who he was and who they were to him. But not this crew. Not the religious leaders. Ever. Ever. Samuel was good. Deborah was good. There's a handful that were good in their history. But for the majority of them, they were crooked, evil. Look at this. You just met the man. I don't even know if they offered him some coffee and a Krispy Kreme. I don't even know if they took his coat and sat him down for this discussion. But right away... They're trying to trick and trap this man. They're not respecting him as their new governor. Oh, no. Deception is how they hit him up. Let's read that again. They're just meeting him. And look where their hearts are. Look where their minds are. Look what their, where their emotions are. Just pure evil and deception with murder and hatred in their hearts. Come on. Grab that uh, baby roof bar and, and let's get into this. They asked, this is verse 3 again. They asked Festus as a favor. Okay, new guy. Ah, new governor. Yeah. How about a favor? Here comes Pastor Tim now. They must have Amen. his truck loaded from side to side, bottom to top, and on his way. <laughs> Amen? Amen. We're in verse 3. All right. Where the priests are asking the leading priest, and Jewish leaders, you know who they are, the church folk, right? Uh-huh, amen. They're asking the new guy, Festus. He just arrived. Festus has taken over for Felix. 
Paul's still in jail. He'd been in there two years. And so they asked Festus as a favor to transfer Paul to Jerusalem, planning to ambush and kill him on the way. Now, you just wow, met guess. him. <laughs> and already, I, I guess, oh, your sorry, scheming, ahead. your deception, yeah. you're going to use this man at, 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 at watch this, you could be putting this man's job in jeopardy. He just started his job. You don't care. You got evil on your heart. There's a new sheriff in town. <laughs> and you're going to try to use him. And this could destroy his career. Amen? But you're so evil, so full of hate and murder... You don't care about him, his authority, his office. You want this relentless attack on Paul to come to a conclusion and to be able to spit on Paul's dead body. Amen. And I got to throw a little something in there too, Rev. I said. knew you would. That's why. Backed it up into your corner. You know, sometimes you got to back that truck up to a dock <laughs> to get it unloaded. Yeah. Uh -huh. You heard Amen. the beep, beep, uh, beep, beep. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I was going to say, you know, I guess they haven't com come up with the concept of separation of state and church yet during these times. No. State ran everything. We, we don't give a darn about your church. We don't give a darn about your religion. We have enslaved you, homie. But our you gods know. are Caesar. <laughs> Amen. And our many but Roman gods. This mess you talking about don't mean nothing to us. What you better do is get to work today, make lots of money, so that we can tax the snot out of you. Go get our Amen. money. Yeah, so no, there's no separation of church and state. Amen? Yeah, it seems it seemed like the church folk get a little political. Well, yeah. And the amazing thing is, they don't really know him. He could have pulled a sword and cut all their heads off. Mm -hmm. Seeing through their plot, he did get a chance to talk to Felix. But what he is really seeing is the horror, the nightmare of people who say that they love God. They say that they serve God. Well, they're sitting in front of him in priestly robes as if they serve a God. And that's why folks don't want to come to church, because they see What's going on? You see? Amen. Yes, they need God. They've hit that point in their life. They'd love to find Jesus. And then they walk into a situation like this. Oh, yeah. This is wretched. Verse 4 says, Festus replied that Paul was at Caesarea and he himself would be returning there soon. So he said, those of you in authority can return with me. If Paul has done anything wrong, you can make your accusation. Now that leads, that should lead all of us to believe Festus ain't no fool. Uh-uh, he's going to put it back on him. He's going to be like, uh-uh. He I'm already knows. With Pilate. Yeah, uh, he already knows we're holding a Roman citizen in a jail that doesn't have one good accusation against him and he's been there two years. The prior official, before he left, when I arrived and he handed me the keys, he told me all about this. So this man is not stupid. Uh -uh. But they trying to play him for stupid. Just like 
what we're seeing in the world today, we're seeing leaders trying to play us for stupid. Oh, don't think we don't see what you're doing. Now, we serve a mighty God, and he reveals truth. And while you're sending out all these lies through your sources into our ears, don't think God don't speak to us and tell us, they lying. <laughs> and me and Rod got something. I can't do it in a podcast. He sent me a cartoon one day <laughs> about somebody lying to somebody. They sent him down the road. Amen. But anyway. Look what he said. Those of you in authority can return with me. In other words, Paul ain't going nowhere. He's in my jail. And if you want to come to my courtroom so we can get to the bottom of this, we can do that. But he saw right through that plot because he said, if. You all act like he didn't say if. He said, if Paul has done anything wrong, you can make your accusation. What the Bible didn't say is that he was in office three days before he left for Jerusalem. Did he go down there with Felix? Bible doesn't say. I'm just throwing something out for the movie. Did he go down and talk about me? You got to meet Paul. Paul school. My wife, she loved Paul. This boy can preach. Really? Well, what is he in your jail for? I mean, I don't know. Them darn Jews done accused him of something. I can't make no sense of it. But you got to admit, he's a delightful fellow. And he got a good friend named Luke in there. Luke just plays with crayons and paper all day long, writing down stuff. But, <laughs> yeah, you got to meet him. We don't know where this if comes from. But see, these are Roman governors. One's on his way back to Rome, hoping he don't lose his life. <laughs> you don't want to lose your post and go back to Rome. There's only two things going to happen. Either you got promoted, or that's you laying on the floor with your head rolling around under somebody's table. Amen. Rome was vicious, even with their own. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Amen. So, uh, verse 6 says, about eight or ten days later, Festus returned to Caesarea. And on the following day, he took his seat in court and ordered that Paul be brought in. Dum, 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 dum. I'm wondering if Paul's coming in in chains. I don't think so. Festus didn't, I mean, Felix didn't treat him that way. But there's a new sheriff in town. Amen. Was the press <laughs> allowed <laughs> into the courtroom? We might need some drama like they do today. Put leg irons well, and. <laughs> well, well, Rep, I mean, well, you know, amen. I mean, look at what just happened. Three days in, and they're already running up on them trying to push their agenda, just like today. And don't they're even notice, to man. Their... Amen. Yes, just like today. That's what I'm hoping you guys will see. Now, we know around the world that there's different justice systems. For those of you that are following in America, oh, we've had an eye on this justice system since forever. <laughs> okay. It ain't never seemed to work out for the innocent or the people. Never has. But now we're seeing it with the gloves on. Amen. And it looks real ugly, don't it? Amen. If they can do that to him... I don't care how you feel about him, and I'm not sharing how I feel. I'm just saying, if they can do that to him, what about us? We don't have millions of dollars for attorneys. 
We can't even stay out. We can't make bail. <laughs> and we're oh, going to a place today in Solano Prison where many of these gentlemen, they don't belong there. Amen. But you know what, Rev? We do have an attorney. We do have an advocate. We do have an appointed defender. Yes, we do. And his name is Jesus Esquire. Amen. He's our attorney. <laughs> He's our lawyer, and we all got his card. His card is a little bit bigger than most lawyers' cards. <laughs> a little bit thicker. Amen? Amen. And I'm glad you went there, Tim, because we're going to see how the Holy Spirit works through Paul as he's been down two years now. Amen? Mm -hmm. Three more years, he gets a tattoo teardrop under an eye. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But let's see how the Holy Spirit speaks through him and what this outcome Amen. going to be. Amen. Amen. All right. So he's ordered Paul into the courtroom. Verse 7. When Paul arrived, the Jewish leaders from Jerusalem gathered around and made many serious accusations they couldn't prove. <laughs> he did that. He stole my mama's apple pie off the windowsill when she was just trying to cool it off. He ate it all. He ate it all. Oh, they got every. They're telling every lie that they 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 got a hubbub going on in this courtroom. But the Bible says many serious accusations. They couldn't prove. And as we're going into this tribulation, the truth always defeats the lie. Oh, yeah, we're accused of being this, and we're accused of being that, and we're accused of being this other. But we're simply running for our lives, not taking this mark, not worshiping that beast, but looking for Christ to come on those clouds. You can call me anything you want. Truth is, you better not take that mark. You up here hurling insults at us. You take that mark and worship that beast, you will burn in hell for forever. We know what we're doing because we have the truth. You bought into a rotten apple with worms. That's a lie. And you want us to eat it with you. Ain't happening. <laughs> We're not going down that road. Amen? <coughs> so verse 8 says, this is like, what was that show? Perry Mason. We in the courtroom, y'all. You know? C CSI or something like that. Paul denied the charges. <laughs> I am not guilty of any crime against the Jewish laws or the temple or the Roman government, he said. Verse 9, Then Festus, wanting to please the Jews, we're going to come back to that, asked him, Are you willing to go to Jerusalem and stand trial before me there? All right, so, let's get into this. Now comes the politics. See, if he can keep the Jews from rioting, disturbing the peace. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Then no reports will end up back in Rome under his rule here in Israel. His rule is governor. Amen? So he flips the script. What he heard with the accusations did nothing to faze him. He's not even questioning you, Paul, about any of these false accusations. He knows they're false just like Paul knows they're false, just like the liars who are telling him know that these accusations are false. But no, it's time to make a political move here. How do we know that? Because verse 9 says, Then Festus, wanting to please the Jews, why would he want to please these crooks? Because he needs peace. 
in Jerusalem. So he will appease them. What can he get out of Paul? Felix already told him, I had this boy in jail for two years. He ain't gave up. He ain't coughed up a red nickel. <laughs> he won't bribe me. I can't get a penny out of him. I think he broke fast. <laughs> so there's nothing to gain politically or financially from Paul. There may be something he can gain by appeasing the Jews. So really, the uh, the situation with Paul is no longer in Festus's mind. How can I further my career? How can I get in good? So this thing. This new position I'm in will work. I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Right. Let's go to the study guide here, and then we'll continue. Amen. And so, all those two years have passed, the Jewish leaders still were looking for a way to kill Paul. The fire did not go out, y'all. That's just pure hatred that can only come from Satan. What you talking about, Rev? That that fire hasn't gone out even today. Even today. This same activity, this same rebellious nature, disobedience, and failure to come into faith with Christ Jesus, the Messiah of Israel, still continues today. There are Jews, handfuls, maybe hopefully many thousand who have come into the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. But as a nation, nah, Messiah hasn't come. We're waiting for Isaiah. Okay. Let me know how that works for you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. They invite you over for dinner and, uh, you know, they got a machete, and they tell you it's just for a, it's just a carving knife. You might want to reconsider. Yeah. That's the only study guide we got so far. Back to Scripture, verse 10. But Paul replied, No! Why y'all looking at me like that? <laughs> There's an exclamation mark in my Bible. No! This is the official Roman court. So I ought to be tried right here. You know very well. See, even Paul knows Festus's mind and heart and situation. He probably heard Felix and Festus talking before they got to his cell. You know very well I'm not guilty of harming the Jews. If I have done something worthy of death, I don't refuse to die. But if I'm innocent, no one has a right to turn me over to these men to kill me. I appeal to Caesar. Whoa, y'all. Now, he don't have a defense attorney that you can physically see. But he's got God on his side. He's got the Lord Jesus living in his heart. And out of his mouth, powered by the Holy Spirit, God's will will be done. Don't forget, God, Jesus, it was in red a couple chapters ago. If you look back, I'm going to find this red here, okay? Go back to chapter 23. This is before this arrest. Amen? That night, the Lord, uh, verse 11 in chapter 23 says, That night the Lord appeared to Paul and said, Be encouraged, Paul. Just as you have been a witness to me here in Jerusalem, you must preach the good news in Rome as well. Now, we're back in chapter 25. I appeal to Caesar. Do y'all know where Caesar's seat, where he rules the world from, is? Where is it, Tim? Rome. It's in Rome. 
Look at the Holy Ghost work, y'all. Look at Paul work. Like Tim said, his lawyer is Jesus. His advocate is the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. And Paul just did something incredible in the sights of these evil, evil religious leaders. I don't even know why the Bible keeps calling them religious leaders. These are murderers, thieves, liars, hypocrites. These aren't religious leaders. They're the scum of the earth. Are you with me? Would you like to run with these crooks? With their flowing robes, chest pointed straight out, so full of pride and evil? How would you like to have them come over for dinner? All great-grandmama's silver silverware is going to disappear. They might just pull a gun on you at the table and say, we don't want to stay any longer, but we're taking everything with us, including TV. That's the kind of people they are, but they're being called religious leaders. Well, whatever religion that is, <coughs> I'm going to tell you, we need to stay out of there. Now, are you with me? <coughs> if your leadership is corrupt, and it was, what good is whatever you're serving? We really want to put distance between people like this. That's how you live above reproach. See, this podcast can turn into something else if we don't keep reading this word. Don't y'all rile me up now. I didn't come to preach. I only came to teach. Y'all Y'all settle down out there now, okay? Watch this. So he's appealed to Caesar. Festus conferred with his advisor. Now, you know that was awesome move that Paul's defense team just came up with. It's so awesome. Festus had to go, he had to call his advisors, advisors up to the bench and start whispering. Hey, man, can he do that? Heck, yeah, he could do that. He's a Roman citizen. Why do you think he couldn't do that? Well, where does that leave me? That leaves you getting him to Rome, and he better arrive alive. That's where it leaves you. You only got a couple of weeks in on your new job. Do you really want to have Rome upset with you because the witness that you're sending to Rome got killed on the way there? Homie, you better do this thing right or we'll all be out of a job. Oh, they whispering all right. <laughs> Trying to protect themselves. You see what I'm saying? That's all people look out for. Back then and today, they look out for themselves and they don't mind who they crush, who they hurt, how much damage they cause. Looking out for themselves. Amen. Amen. So verse 12 says, Festus conferred with his advisors and then replied, Very well! Exclamation mark. Very well! Huh. You have appealed to Caesar, and to Caesar you will go! Exclamation mark. He upset at y'all. That's what I feel in my spirit. He couldn't play with this. He can't use this any longer to further his career or to get himself in a better position with the Jews. <laughs> it all got shut down. Look at God. And that's how he'll defend us in these last days. That's how he's worked with us all our lives. When God come to the rescue, you know you've been rescued. Amen? We lost Tim. He might have hit a bad area. He'll call right back. Watch this. We're going to read that again. Verse 12. 
Festus conferred with his advisors and then replied, Very well. You have appealed to Caesar, and to Caesar you will go. Verse 13, a few days later, King Agrippa arrived with his sister Bernice. Uh oh. <laughs> Festus got somebody bigger than him coming to town. And they came to pay their respects to Festus. What's that mean? King Agrippa comes in. Hey, Festus. Yeah, welcome to the territory. Welcome to Israel. This ain't no pretty post here. Can't wait to get back to Rome, but check it out, homie. <laughs> we welcome you. We pray you do a good job and keep your job and keep your head. <laughs> right? So verse 14 says, During their stay of several days, Festus discussed Paul's case with the king. Now, y'all got to get into this. What does the king need to know? Paul been in prison for two years. King Agrippa ain't came to town. You see, my thing is this. If King Agrippa's come and I'm the governor, he must be checking me out. He stayed several days. What are you looking at? I'm taking good care of him and his wife. I'm making sure they got everything they want. Hospitality is on hit. We got the musicians playing, the girls dancing, the food steadily coming. Why won't this man leave? <laughs> That'd be my thought. Let's see what happens here. Amen? During their stay of several days, Festus discussed Paul's case with the king. There's a prisoner here, he told him. See, that ain't, that ain't the king's business. But he's making it the king's business. Why? Because something was going on inside his soul. Look at God work, y'all. You gonna bring this small matter before the king? And you just got into position? What if he don't see things eye to eye with you? You could be in trouble with King Agrippa. Look where he's taking himself. But watch how the Lord works. Amen? He said, uh, he said, there is a prisoner here, he told him, whose case was left for me by Felix. So automatically, he putting this on Felix. Now, Felix is on his way back to Rome or has already arrived back in Rome. In other words, this wasn't my mess. This was left for me by my predecessor. Okay? He making that clear. Verse 15. When I was in Jerusalem... The leading priests and Jewish elders pressed charges against him and asked me to condemn him. In other words, they want me to kill this man, King Agrippa. They got charges, and they want me to execute him. Verse 16, I pointed out to them that Roman law does not convict people without a trial. They must be given an opportunity to confront their accusers and defend themselves. So he's letting this king know that he knows Roman law and that he knew better than to hand this, this guy Paul over to these people. Amen? Uh, these leading priests and Jewish elders, he knew better than to do that. So he's trying to let the king know, hey, I ain't going outside the law here, king. I'm going to do what's right. You see? Now, verse 17, he continues, when his accusers came here for the trial, I didn't delay. In other words, I'm not infringing on 
their rights or this man's rights. I didn't put them off and make them wait two weeks. They arrived. We went into court. Amen. I called the case the very next day and ordered Paul brought in. But the accusations, verse 18 says, but the accusations made against him weren't any of the crimes I expected. He ain't killed nobody. He ain't stole from nobody. He hasn't caused a riot. He hasn't done anything that I would have expected because they're asking that I kill him. Well, if I'm going to kill him, then he's a mad rapist. He's a molester. He's something. In my mind, none of those charges came, King. Look at him very carefully protecting himself as he approaches the king to make the king aware of this prisoner and these Jews. He's covering his butt because if these Jews go off, you see, and it gets to the ear of King Agrippa, King Agrippa could come again. Festus, you see, so he's trying to cover his tail in the presence of King Agrippa. Watch how he continues to worm and squirm. Amen? He said in verse 18, but the accusations made against him weren't any of the crimes I expected. Instead, it was something about their religion and a dead man named Jesus, who Paul insists is a lie. <laughs> See, Rome thought everything about the temple, these priests, their way of living, this God they serve, they thought it all nonsense. And so Festus is playing into that Roman thought of these enslaved Jews. It's just more of their religious nonsense. But that that doesn't bring a charge of capital punishment. Amen? It's something about their religion and a dead man named Jesus, who Paul says is alive. See how ridiculous that would sound in the king's ear, especially if he doesn't know anything about Jesus or the way. Festus knew. I'm sorry, Felix knew. We don't even know what Festus knows about the way. Amen? About Jesus, about salvation. Sound like he's just a typical, typical politician. Amen? Verse 20. I was at a loss to know how to investigate these things, so I asked him, whether he would be willing to stand trial on these charges in Jerusalem. Funny he went there with the king. Now, if he'd even attempted to have that trial in Jerusalem, Paul would be dead. He'd be buzzard food because these priests, religious leaders, and elders of Israel had already planned Boy, you bring that man to Jerusalem, he dead. He won't make it. Amen? So watch this. Verse 21. But Paul appealed to have his case decided by the emperor. Listen to that again. He's telling the king, Festus is, but Paul appealed to have his case decided by the emperor, Caesar himself. The Bible doesn't say that. I'm throwing it in. By the emperor. So I ordered that he be held in custody until I could arrange to send him to Caesar. Listen where King Agrippa comes from. He done heard the story. Festus kind of left the part out that Paul 
has been in jail for two years under Felix. He did say that the case was handed over to me by Felix, so the blame's on Felix now that this man is in my custody. And I tried with the quickness to take them to trial to figure out either this man is dead or this man's free. Who is this man? Talking about a dead man named Jesus that's really alive. You feel me? So now listen to what the king says. I'd like to hear the man myself, Agrippa said. And Festus replied, you will. Tomorrow. Festus is about, see, <laughs> he knows he's in a very rocky place if he don't handle this right. And he going to make everything possible for this king to hear Paul. Oh, you will. Tomorrow. <laughs> I'll set it up. Amen? Amen. So the next day, verse 23 says, Agrippa and Bernice arrived at the auditorium with great pomp. Y'all know what that is, right? That's what Adrena was fussing at me about when I said, you ladies know how to work a room. Okay? There's trumpets blowing. There's people carrying the back of your dress like you getting married again or for the first time. Amen? There's violins playing at your entrance. The lights are just perfect. And there's one on you as you come in. Amen? And your walk and your demeanor, your posture is just absolutely perfect. And every woman in that room hates you. Oh, I hate her. What you hate her for? You know her? I ain't never seen her before in my life, but look at her entrance. I should have done that. That should have been me. All eyes on her when all eyes should have been on me. <laughs> you know how you women do it. Well, here comes the king and his wife with great pomp. Oh, yeah. There's people dancing in front of him and trumpets blowing and flags waving. Here come the king and his beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous wife. Now, she could have had a, work, a wart on her nose. And they just still call her beautiful because that's the king's wife and the king cut your head off. <laughs> Amen? So, Amen. watch this. The, uh, verse 23. So the next day, a group and Bernice arrive at the auditorium with great pomp, accompanied by military officers and prominent men of the city. Oh, my goodness. This is more than lights and music. <laughs> he got soldiers marching, and he walking in between them when they stop. He got soldiers in front, soldiers in the side, soldiers in the rear, and they in they dress uniforms. They shining. Amen? Amen. And everybody who's anybody, all the wolves of Wall Street, <laughs> right? All the top Amen. execs are walking in behind him. Amen? Festus ordered that Paul be brought in. Then Festus said, King Agrippa and all who are here, this is the man whose death is demanded by all the Jews, both here and in Jerusalem. But in my opinion, he has done nothing deserving death. Oh, you all like like he didn't say it. But in my opinion, he has done nothing deserving death. However, since he appealed his case to the emperor, I have decided to send him to Rome. And here comes the crux of it all. Look at verse 26. But what should I write to the emperor? For there is no clear charge against him. So I have brought him before all of you, and especially you, King Agrippa, so that after we examine him, I might have something to write. For it makes no sense to send a prisoner 
to the emperor without specifying the charges against him. Look at God, yo. Amen. Look at God, yo. When we walk in truth, when we walk in God's way, not our way, God's way, what they're going to accuse you of? Anything they accuse us of will be lies, y'all. I'm telling you, if this podcast start, <laughs> stops and y'all don't see me no more on Facebook, then you know that through this platform, somehow, my name has gotten to the authorities and they're going to call me this, that, and the other, and they're going to have some trumped-up charges. I ain't doing nothing. I don't even leave the house except when Gail and Tex get here and we go to the prison. You see what I'm saying? I'm hey, not doing nothing. There, <laughs> I'm not going to do anything. So the only Amen. charges they could put against me would You're be lies. <laughs> <laughs> Don't believe the hype, yo. But guess Amen. what? I'll be preaching in that prison. I Amen. hope it's a big one so we can have some big church services. Amen. Amen. Hold on, Rev. Uh, okay. I like how you said that. You said we had to walk in. We can't walk in our way. We have to walk in God's way. And Lord, forgive have me. Have to. Can, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But can we walk in Yahweh? <laughs> Very good. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. I like that, Tim. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, when your heart is right, your mind is right. When you're in the arms of Jesus, no matter how corrupt the government is, no matter how corrupt your enemies are, and Paul got enemies. They just happen to be church folk. <laughs> we got a lot of enemies, and they call themselves church folk. I'm just saying. Amen. Your enemies can be your family. We got plenty of those, too. Your enemies no, can be the neighborhood be you grew up in or other uh, 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 folks in town. You feel me? We got enemies yeah, all over the place. Your enemy. Say that again, Tim. I said you could have a best friend that may be, they may be nice to your face and sweet talking to you and everything. Yeah. They turn around and stab you in the back. And that's what these women don't understand, Drina. See, you walk in a room and blow the place up and got people following you around, blowing musical instruments like trumpets and saxophones. You think you ain't making enemies? Because, see, the girl that worked in the back at that restaurant, she might have had her eye on that man, and he saw the look in his eyes. When you floated in the room with your sister. That's how Darth Vader <laughs> said it. Your sister. <laughs> right? You know what I'm talking about, Anna. You know what I'm talking about, Ladera. You can't even go to Woody's. Can't even go to Woody's without turning some man's head. It's what y'all do. But you think because you turned his head, there ain't going to be no haters in the room? Shoot, they all around. You can't even go in church yeah. today and not make some enemies. Isn't that the shame of it all? Isn't that the shame? But you all know you be working a room just like you work a church. <laughs> and then the pastor will say, come on up here, Drina. Say something to the congregate. Oh, I don't. Oh, well, God is just so good. That's the only reason I'm going to come up. And then they come up and heads are turning and all eyes on you. Rev, I got to ask. Are you trying to call out the hurricane? I know. I need to leave Miss Drina alone because I'm going to catch it for this one. But oh, I just. I hope you got a bomb shelter or a bunker <laughs> somewhere nearby. <laughs> I forgot they call her Miss Hurricane, too. Amen. But Amen. you see what's going on in the spirit. Leave the characters out. Amen. There is no king. There is no Festus. There is no Paul. 
What's being judged in this courtroom is God's truth. And what's coming against it is Satan, the father of all lies, trying to destroy the vehicle the truth is riding in. He can't well, stop the truth because it's already hit the world all over the place like a wildfire. But he can sure take Paul out. Why do you think the demon said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, who are you? Because Paul is doing damage to Satan's kingdom. Amen. Are you following me? In the spirit, Amen. it's the lie coming against the truth. Jesus is that truth. Amen. Well, I, got a, I got a question for you there, Rev. Okay. Now, you, like you just said, you're trying to judge the truth, but how can you judge the truth when there is only one judge over it? Because man thinks in his own mind, in his own way. Go back to what I said. We got to live God's way. Amen. But man in his own little warped mind, in his own little evil way, wants to have power, wants to have authority, wants to have riches, wants to rule over people. They can't even rule themselves into the bathroom on time. That's why the front of their trousers is wet. Amen. They couldn't fight their way out of a wet paper bag if their lives depended on it. But they want to rule over somebody else's life. Your own life is a wreck. But you want to have thousands of people under your rule? Oh, I don't think so. I'll stay Amen. under Jesus. Huh. You go do your madness somewhere else. I ain't coming. I'll resist. I don't Amen. want nothing to do with what you're doing. But I want everything to do with what Christ is doing. See, I found out about ways. My way sent me to hell. And it's only by the grace of God I'm here today with y'all. Okay? I don't have a way anymore. <laughs> it's God's way or no way. And when you get there to that place, you're in the safest place you can be in life. It doesn't matter what they're doing to you, what they're saying about you, how they're treating you. As long as you're in God's hand, that's the way it's supposed to be. When the world loves you, you you're not in relationship with God. It's when the world hates you that you know you're in the hands of God. Amen. We're not doing this to be liked. <laughs> We're not doing this to become famous, make money. I've already talked to you all. Now, they're knocking our numbers way down like we don't exist. So maybe they heard a podcast where I said we will not be monetized. We don't want to be monetized. We're, we're not doing this for followers to get to some golden egg. You got to be crazy. And then they start plastering commercials. Can you imagine a 30 second commercial, a 15 second commercial, and then another one comes if you don't skip it in between what the Holy Ghost is speaking here? When would they Amen. do it? Min mid sentence? Huh, probably. And what kind They've of commercial? Would that commercial come against? What we believe, the lifestyle that God has asked us to live. See, I'm not going to love that. I don't need that. What they're offering, I don't want. We're not here for that. We're here for you. <laughs> and you, and you, and you, and you. That you get this word, fall in love with Jesus, be healed in your bodies, delivered in your lives, situations, healed in your minds, on fire for the Lord, 
and on your way to heaven. It's where you're going to end up from what we're doing that we're concerned with. We want each and every one of you in heaven. That's why we do this. It's for the salvation of souls. Not views, not hits. And Tim's watch, he's watched since we started doing this. We we would be three or four hundred. Amen. There's something like seven fifty subscribers up on YouTube. But now they want our views to look like eight, <laughs> nine, ten. They don't want you to know how many views are really here. Because that might attract attention. We've watched the subscribers, they just all disappear. What they don't know is we're watching because our own people are saying, hey, I didn't get notification today that you did a podcast, but I know you. I know you did. Where'd it go? How come you didn't post? I did post. And then they check and see, oh, my notifications got turned off, and I'm yeah. unsubscribed, and I didn't do it. <laughs> so we know it's game. But see, we're bringing truth, y'all. We don't give a darn about the lie. We don't give a darn about the haters or the deceit. <laughs> That's small potatoes in this battle for souls. You see what I'm saying? It's not worth Amen. focusing on. It doesn't matter what they show us doing. We're successful, not by man's standards, but we're doing this to please God. By his standards, his word keeps going out. He's happy. He loves working through us into your life. We're just dead. We're just his. Are you with me? That's Amen. where Paul is. But look how God moved today. Oh, wait for tomorrow's podcast. We're done. We finished that chapter. Let me go into some study guide here. Amen. And uh, <clears throat> we'll see what else Tim's got. Paul knew that he was innocent of the charges against him and could appeal to Caesar's judgment. He knew his rights as a Roman citizen and as an innocent person. Now, that's what's coming into question for us. We have rights, but our rights are being taken away here right now. Amen. You see, with a justice system that can do anything they want to perpetuate their agenda against anyone they want. So that's why I said, if I disappear, it's okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep preaching Amen. and I'm going to keep teaching but when it hits the news and they say, oh, yeah, he did this and he did that, don't believe the hype. They just don't want me telling this truth. And it's okay. Because wherever they put me, I'm going to tell the truth. And if they take my life, I get to ride back with Christ. Torch in the sky. Hopefully I'll have that body armor and a cape and get to ride back with Jesus as we're coming back for his bride. I don't care where this leads. It's not a concern of mine. What is a concern of mine is how many of you going to get healed in your bodies today? How many of you are going to get off drugs and alcohol today by his power? Oh, you act like there's no power. Power! How many of you will be delivered and set free? How many of you afflicted with PTSD? will no longer have it free today in Jesus' name. Those are my concerns. What they're thinking about, what they're plotting, what they're planning, how they're trying to silence, take away our right. I, hey, y'all do what you do. You've been serving him. You've been kneeling to Satan and his demons. Keep on. What did we read? At the end of Revelation, when we finished, our Bible study last week, Tim. 
It said, let those that are vile remain to be vile. Y'all can be vile. Verse 11, Revelation 22. Let the one who is doing harm continue to do harm. Hey, do what you do. Serve your master. Serve that devil. Serve them demons. Be as evil as you can be. Go ahead. That's in the Bible. Let the one who is doing harm continue to do harm. Let the one who is vile continue to be vile. And boy, y'all some vile, wicked people. Amen. You really are. And you know who I'm talking to. You know who you are. All this trafficking, this fentanyl, this evil that you're using to destroy this nation and people's lives, children? Really? You have no guilt in that, huh? Oh, yeah, I'm talking to you. You serve that demon. Go ahead. Go ahead. It says here, let the one who is righteous continue to be, to live righteously. That's us, y'all. Let's just stick to God's way. Man's way, I'll end you up in that pit of hell. Amen? Let the one who is righteous continue to live righteously. Let the one who is holy continue to be holy. That's the path I choose. Amen? Let them do it. Let them do whatever they're going to do. And right now, the gloves are off all around this world. There is nothing too wicked. <laughs> nothing too wicked <laughs> for them to do. They used to hide the wickedness. They ain't even hiding no more. Satan ain't hiding, uh -huh. y'all. He right out in the open working through these folks. Amen. Amen. These gloves are off. Gloves are off. Now watch this. Paul had met his responsibilities as a Roman, and so he had the opportunity to claim Rome's protection. Every Roman citizen had the right to appeal to Caesar. This didn't mean that Caesar himself would hear the case, but that the citizen's case would be tried by the highest courts in the empire. Festus saw Paul's appeal as a way to send him out of the country and thus pacify the Jews. Now, he can't pacify them Jews. I like where the study guide went. They got murder in their heart. The fact that he got sent to Rome, that doesn't satisfy that desire, that hatred, that murderous heart. They're not going to be happy until his, his blood and brain matter are splattered all over their faces and robes. That's Amen. when they get off. You see? Serve that devil. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. I ain't joining you. Tell you that. Watch this. Paul wanted to go to Rome to preach the good news. And he knew that his appeal would give him the opportunity. To go to Rome as a prisoner was better than not going there at all. Amen? Amen. I got another one. This was Herod Agrippa II, the son of Herod Agrippa I, and a descendant of Herod the Great. He had power over the temple, controlled the temple treasury, and could appoint and remove the high priest. That ain't no church at all, y'all. Only the Lord assigns the priest. That's how corrupt this religion had become. Amen? Bernice was the sister of Herod Agrippa II. She had married her uncle, Herod Chalcis, had become mistress to her brother, Agrippa II, and then had become mistress to the emperor, Vespasian's son, Titus. Here, Agrippa and Bernice were making an official visit to Festus. Look how these folks live, y'all. Look how they was living. Wow. 
ain't give a darn. Well, this girl goes where the power and the money and the fortune is, looks like. I didn't see her going with no fishermen, no shepherds, no preachers. Amen. She stayed with royalty. <laughs> Amen. Agrippa of Jewish descent. I'm sorry. Here, Agrippa and Bernice were making an official visit to Festus. Agrippa of Jewish descent could help clarify Paul's case for the Roman governor. Agrippa and Festus were anxious to cooperate in governing their neighboring territory. Are you with me? Amen. So this is political. They try and protect their own behind. The shame of it all, Agrippa is a half half Jew or full Jew. I can't remember. Where's your God, Agrippa? Ah, he sits in Rome. Got it. He signs your check every week. Got it. He gives you bigger and better promotions as you prove yourself worthy. I understand. So it's not being Jewish that gets you into heaven, is it? It's falling in love with Jesus. Amen. It's not your bloodline that's going to get you into heaven. It's your faith in Christ and the work he did on that cross that gets us into heaven. He's as lost as the rest of the nation of Israel. Amen. He's as lost as these evil religious leaders, the Pharisees, Sadducees, teachers of religious law. I've got two more. Even though Festus knew little about Christianity, he somehow sensed that the resurrection was central to Christian belief. Paul was in prison, but that didn't stop him from making the most of his situation. Military officers and prominent city leaders met in the auditorium with Agrippa to hear this case. Now that's amazing, y'all. All of a sudden, Paul got a hall, an auditorium full of an audience that wants to know, hey, Paul, you've been behind bars for two years now. What'd you do? Did you do something so horrendous and we forgot? Everybody of importance is now there. But none of them know Jesus, huh? Amen. Watch this now. Paul saw this new audience as yet another opportunity to present the good news. Hey! Look at the Holy Ghost work, yo. That's why we need God's Holy Spirit in us. Because we could be in a place where we could be fussing, throwing tantrums. I'm an innocent man. I don't belong here. Let me go. Where's my phone call? The food here sucks. <laughs> Can I get an in and out burger, please? Watch this. Rather than complain about your present situation, look for ways to use every opportunity to serve God and share him with others. Your problems. Maybe opportunities in disguise. I've noticed that in my 19 years of ministry, I ain't been too many places I wanted to be, but I was in all kind of places where God took me and left me there and said, represent me, serve me from this viewpoint. Serve me over here. Some were dangerous. Some were treacherous. Some were awesome opportunities. But I've noticed one thing. God keeps you moving. I no longer have a place I can call home. Whatever Los Angeles was to me in my past, it ain't no more. Don't look like the Lord gonna let us go back. So just onward and forward in with the Lord. I don't care. I don't care where you take me. I don't care where I end up. You feel me? Well, we know where you're going to end up tomorrow. 
Or today, I mean. I'm going to prison, y'all. Yeah. Oh, you act like I ain't going to prison. <laughs> Take me to prison, lot. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, and I got to ask y'all, Rev been praying for it. If he gets the opportunity, you know, pray for him that he can get to death row. Yes. I would love to get on death row. Because, see, that's kind of the ultimate of the ultimate of the prison system. Well, I mean, if Whatever you did, did it. they have judged that you don't even deserve to live anymore. We're going to take your life and end it. What you did was horrible. And nine times out of ten, that may be true, y'all. Yeah. But as a pastor, as your favorite rail, where would I be with God if I were to close my heart to him or her on death row? I can't wait to get to death row. I'm thinking that's the ultimate of preaching and teaching. Lord, if we can catch this heart, did did Pernier? They did a whole lot <laughs> to get here, and they got a few days left, a few weeks left, a few months left. Sometimes they put you on death row for thirty years. I've been wondering about that. How is that death row? Hell, I could die before y'all kill me <laughs> if you leave me here that long. You feel me? But I'm just saying. What a wonderful triumph for God's kingdom if we could pluck souls from such a deadly and desolate place called death row. Amen. I don't know. Call me weird. I just can't think of a better place to pluck souls from. Uh, You see what I'm saying? Amen. Because they are in Satan's hands on their way to hell, just moments away, and then they give their lives to Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I just see, I see smiles on angels' faces. I can feel my Lord's heart skip a beat. Oh, no, he didn't. Yes, he did. You go, boy. (laughs) You go, child. Now I might have to leave you. In here, get some more for me. You see what I'm saying? Amen. My life is to please Jesus. I did everything else in my life to get him upset. But he let me out of hell, the wretch I was. Turned me around, gave me life. I had a death sentence. I was on death row and didn't even know it. He told me, you've been down there 200 years, see what you're thinking before he sent me into that hot body. I didn't know I was getting out. Man, that is mercy. That is grace. He let the wrong one out of hell, I told Randy K. I am just that nut. I will serve him with everything I am till my last breath. Amen. For that. And if he don't do nothing else in my life but that, He done enough. There is no get out of hell (laughs) free card. I don't know that they have that game. Maybe they do. I don't know, Tim. So what you got, Tim, before we pray out? Well, I have a question for the audience to see if they can answer it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Who was the first person that Jesus Christ gave salvation to and welcomed into the kingdom of heaven. Mm. That, I I take it I'm not allowed to answer that? Uh, I prefer you didn't, but you already know what what the answer is. I got some ideas. Uh Uh-huh. So... That's kind of vague, though. You might want to tighten that question up. Who was the first one? Jesus in the flesh? In the flesh. Okay. So Salvation and welcomed into the kingdom of heaven. So that would be in the New Testament, Joe. Amen. As a hint. 
But. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it goes along with. I can't do that because it'll give it away. Uh huh. I think I know where you're going. You're going to a hill. I ain't oh, going to yeah. say no more. Amen. I'm going to a hill. Oh, very good. Very good. Because I thought of a young lady. I thought of a young lady. And I thought, wow. If he lets them have their way, he won't be able to save his soul. I won't go there. We'll talk about it tomorrow. I know I'm saying too much. That's exciting, y'all. Put it in the comments. Amen. The Amen. first person, Jesus in the flesh, granted salvation to. <laughs> Amen. Right? You want to repeat Amen. that one more time, Tim? I want, if you can, if. I just want to see what, what, how people, how well people have been listening to the podcast. Okay. Who was the first person that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior in the flesh, gave salvation to and welcomed into the kingdom of heaven? Oh, see, that, that, you got specific there. That would take out yeah. many others I was thinking that he ministered to. Yeah, very good. Good question, y'all. Now, what about these kids over here? Is there any treats that we could uh, give? For a correct answer. Amen. Well, there is. Hang on. Kids are screaming. They're grabbing their little. Okay. One little girl has about a quarter left in her sticky little fingers. A Rice Krispie treat. <laughs> she hasn't eaten it all. It's a little sticky, but she offered it up. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Who's going to want that? But go ahead, Tim. Well, I was going to say, um, you know, like we were talking about uh, earlier, Rip, look at the agenda that the, that the church is coming up with and working in, uh, you know, in cahoots with the politicians. Yeah. Now, in today's society, I think it's a little bit reversed. I think it's more the politicians dipping into the, you know, putting into the pockets of the church. Yeah. But to get their are, votes, they, to get their backing. To be allowed to come in and spew their lies. Yeah, that's, right. that's been I mean, prevalent for quite a while now. Amen. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these politicians will use religion. You know, it doesn't really matter which one, but they will use them for political standing. Yeah. Like we're seeing here with uh, this new um, Roman uh, governor. Right. You know, right. he's trying to appease the church folks so that they'll hold him up in high regard and, like, and report back to Rome. Hey, this is a great governor. Keep it going. You know, we love this guy. Yeah. He's appeasing to the masses, regardless of whatever he may be doing behind the scenes. Yeah. He's appeasing the masses. And like today, you know, today's society, we all, we've just seen agenda after agenda after agenda, whether it's politicians, whether it's religions, whatever mm -hmm. it may be. Right. Yeah, no, but look how they come against the truth. And that's why we constantly teach, read your word, read your word, read your word. Because if you read your word, you will know God's truth. Having the truth, it will be very easy to see the deception or the lie. That's why we so desperately need God's Holy Spirit living in us, working in us, through us, around us. That's why we have to die to the flesh. That way you're not lured in by sex or money. The two most powerful weapons that Satan uses to remove a pastor from a pulpit is sex and money. And we see him fall. All the time, we've seen them fall for centuries. It's what they do. Up in Amen. that pulpit, undelivered, not in the spirit of God, but still living in the flesh. If the flesh is dead, there's nothing to tempt with sex, or money, or fame, or fortune. So why would we let these liars 
up into God's church, especially into the pulpit, to say anything. Mm. Well, I'm about to get to another point. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, ladies and gentlemen, um, and I'm not telling y'all not to find a great church. I, I believe everybody should find a great church to find, you know, somebody, you know, with, that's teaching the truth and, and where you can communicate with your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ and praise his name and, you know, and all of that. Pray to him. However, and share your gift. I, in and, that and body of gifts. Christ, you right? Got that right. Mm -hmm. But you know, me, I find freedom in this ministry, and this is just me personally. However, yeah, if if I was to go with Rev and and say he decided, you know, hey, we're gonna go to this church today, today, Pastor Tim, and I'm gonna give my testimony. I guarantee you, nine times out of ten, we walk into that church, we're gonna find ourselves and be like, how did we just get back out in the parking lot? We just walked in the lobby. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're going to throw us out on our ear if we try to preach the truth. Right. The truth isn't, well, wasn't welcome then. See, look at it from the spiritual, not the physical. It wasn't welcome in this world ever. Uh -uh. And it still isn't today. They will embrace a lie and ride that pony all the way into hell before they will grasp a hold of God's truth. Isn't that something? That's why I thank God for all of you. Amen. Because you're eating this truth like it's candy. And it's sweet <laughs> on your lips. Amen. Amen. Oh, I wasn't offering you guys candy. <laughs> yes, settle down. <laughs> Kids got into that one. Amen. Sweet on your lips. Yeah. Our week's over. That's what they told me, Ladera. Their week punishment is over, and they can have their sweets again, although they've gotten kind of used to the veggie sticks and dips and, you know, better eating. Yeah. Anything else, Tim, before we pray out? No, I think we got it, because now we're getting ready to get to some of the exciting parts. Yeah. Now, we'll be back tomorrow. Now, Paul gets to address all the prominent, the military, King Agrippa, uh -huh. as well as the liars defending himself. But you know Paul. <laughs> he going to bring forth the knowledge of Jesus Christ, the good news. Somehow, some way, he going to get it out. And right now, actually, this part does... This legal proceeding, it's not even a legal proceeding. It's well, actually just... an illegal gathering as if it could have something to do with this trial. You see, Paul already appealed to Caesar. It doesn't matter what decision is made today. Guilty is all get out, cut his head off, or this man is innocent and let him go. None of that matters anymore because Paul appealed to Caesar. So this is just, in Paul's eye, in God's eye, an opportunity to preach the truth. Amen. To preach the good news. To share the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and what he did on that cross. There Amen. is nothing politically or judicially that can occur and what's going to happen in tomorrow's podcast that could free Paul. Oh, you appealed to Caesar? Baby well, boy, you going to Caesar. <laughs> amen. And I can see it right now in the spirit, Rev. Come on. You know, <clears throat> you're in that courtroom. Yeah. But you got your defender there with you, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He's going to mm -hmm. tell his client, he's going to tell his child, Mm -hmm. Down, son, I'm going to cross-examine this sucker. Right. You know? Yeah. And when he does, he is going to bat him all the way back to the cages. So let's see in tomorrow's podcast what happens next. I pray that you enjoyed this. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this powerful, powerful, life-saving, life-changing, life-rearranging word buried in our hearts with like barbed wire that it will remain in our hearts. 
for eternity in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And Father, I'm already feeling you, you breathing right here off of my shoulder on my neck. It feel warm too, Lord. Don't move. Stay right here. Yeah, I feel that hot love burning in your chest coming over my shoulder. Thank you, Lord. I feel the heat. And you're just smiling because you know we about to do what you called them for. Here, you too, these wonderful people of yours, because you love them so much. But you do them with purpose. And I know what you're getting ready to do right now. And we're, I'm going to speak it, Lord. I'm going to stop talking about you. I'm going to speak it. Amen. If there's an illness, a condition, a disease, a diagnosis, something going on in your body right now. And it could be more than one thing. But we're going to declare right now what it really is. Amen? It is gone right now in Jesus' name. You are healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Right now of any and everything. Doesn't matter the name. It's gone right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Your miracle healing just went through that screen into your life, into your body, in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Some of these, Father, that you love so much, adore so much that you've drawn here, Satan got them bound, got a yoke on your people, Lord. But you drew them here with purpose. <laughs> and I know in your heart, Lord, just the fact that they're in bondage. It's not what it is. It's just that Satan has them bound. It could be drugs, alcohol, gambling. Who knows? But if that's you, then we're speaking to you right now. And by the power of the anointing, that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has put upon this ministry, upon my life. We speak it. Every yoke broken, every stronghold torn down, every chain ripped off right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. You are free. No withdrawal. No monkey on your back and no regret. Free to live for him now. Free to be obedient to this word. Free to serve him for the rest of your days in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Some of these, Father, that you love and adore so much that you've drawn here with purpose. They've been told they got PTSD, anxiety, depression, all kind of stuff, Lord. But you said in your word that the anointing opens up those prison doors and lets the captives free. They're not in a physical prison. Mentally or emotionally, they're in prison. But you said not after today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And we speak to it right now. PTSD gone right now in Jesus' name. Depression gone right now in Jesus' name. Anxiety gone right now in Jesus' name. Bipolar gone in Jesus' name. Schizophrenia gone right now in Jesus' name. Multiple personality disorder gone in Jesus' name. I don't know any more names. But whatever name they put on you, and if they put more than one on you, don't matter. It's all gone right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And you are free in your emotions, free in your hearts, free in your spirits, and free in your minds to come forth and serve him. And those that the Lord have set free are truly free indeed. Run in that freedom for Jesus. Amen. Some of these, Lord, that you've drawn here, that you love and adore so much, and you know each and every one of them, and you know where they're hiding. They've gone into a dark place, and they don't want to come out. But, Lord, you're the light of this world. You are the glory of God. You are that bright morning star. Go to each one of them, Lord. Light that dark place up with you. <laughs> it ain't dark no more. Lord, lend down that nail-pierced hand. Help them to their feet into your loving, 
protecting, safe, forgiving, all powerful arms. Just wrap your arms around them and hold them, squeeze them tight, hug them and love on them, Lord. Let them know they're okay now. They're coming out of this in your arms. Lead them out of that place into a new life lit up by you in Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. And the church said together, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Take us home, Tim. Can you do us all a favor? Have a great day. Yeah. And a wonderful day. Mm -hmm. Have a marvelous and miraculous and loving day. Yeah. In our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Or, as my man Tony the Tiger would say, have a great day yeah. in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, unless you've already made other plans. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow.